Hey, it's Tim here. Today, I want to talk about AI, ChatGPT, and Tableau. It's been in the headlines for the last month. I finally think formed an opinion on this, and so here I am to share it with you. As ever, let's get stuck. Okay, so by no doubt, you will have heard of a tool called ChatGPT. This is me logged into it already. If you haven't, this is probably going to blow your mind. So pause this video, go and check out this tool, ask it some questions and discover what it's made of. In this video, what I wanna do is specifically focus in on how this kind of technology could help disrupt or even aid Tableau and or people using Tableau um, in the future. And so as a very simple uh, task, what you could do is you go to ChatGPT and ask it, what is Tableau? That's a very simple question. What ChatGPT has done in the past is it's gone off and done a bit of machine learning on a corpus of data. A corpus of data is just basically like a, a folder full of information and has gained that in 2021, I believe, and has gone out and sourced information from the internet. And it's used that information to build what is essentially a statistical model of speech and language that then enables it to respond to questions based on the information that it has. So it's not actually built a knowledge graph. It's built a statistical model of how language comes together alongside specific topics and questions. And that's how it's responding. And so here you get a response that is, for all intents and purposes, good enough for the everyday person, one paragraph, straight explainer, perfect. What you can then start to do is ask it a little bit more complex things. So for example, how do I connect Snowflake in Tableau? And it's even able to sort of uh, work through typos or things that you get wrong, and it will give you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to use those two technologies to begin together. And more often than not, this comes back 99% of the time correct. And so this is a really, really good way of kind of using this tool as a conversational assistant. The other thing I think this tool does really well, so you can ask a follow-on questions. For example, um, how would I set up that connection with more security? So what I've done here is I've asked I've asked the chat GPT to essentially carry on from where it's left with that particular question. And I can just say, well, how do I add more security to that connection? And so here there are a few key ways you can set up more secure connections between Tableau and Snowflake. Use a secure connection, original. <laughs> Let's wait for the second step here. Use a private network. Um, if you're using a private network to connect to Tableau, something like a VPN, then people can't sort of snoop on your conversation. Use rival level security. That's specifically looking at the actual data that you're getting access to. Uh, use single sign-on to sign into Snowflake and Tableau, so things are a little bit better. And so as a conversational tool, I think this is fantastic because you can get deeper into a topic asking sort of one sentence at a time to get your better understanding of a particular topic. And I think this is actually the best way to use this. I can almost imagine this as a, a conversational AI in your ear with, a, with an airport or something. You just talking out loud and something sort of telling you how it works. A bit like the film Her. I don't know if you've watched it. If you haven't, that's a great film you should go watch. To me, this kind of technology is almost in that realm. It's really, really good. And it starts to fall over when you get into sort of more complex questions. For example, how would you configure a Snowflake driver for Tableau server? Okay, so there's a, definitely going to be some typos in there. To configure a Snowflake driver for Tableau server, follow these steps, download the Snowflake ODBC driver, install the ODBC driver, and it goes through the steps. And you can essentially get to a point where it essentially trips up on some of these steps and it tries to give instructions on how to do things. Now, in this set, in this particular set of instructions, it's made an assumption that I'm using Tableau Server for Windows in order to do this. And um, the other interesting thing is as it gets more and more complex, the more complex questions you ask it, there's a higher risk that one of these points is not actually factually correct, but actually it's still doing a pretty good job of detailing out everything I need to know to bring these two capabilities together. And it just keeps on going. And in essence, if you don't know anything about this topic, what I always say is the more it gives you, the more risk that something is wrong and you're gonna make a mistake. So you do actually need to know this topic well in order to actually make use of this, which makes it pointless. Because if you know this topic well, why would you come here to understand how it works? That's where this sort of tool falls down. And I think it's a very interesting capability, but it's got its own sort of words of caution. But that doesn't mean I don't think it's useful. I'll come back to that point a little later on. What I want to move on to next is how is this technology going to work inside of Tableau? And the answer is it's already working inside of Tableau. If I go over to the Tableau's page for AI and analytics, 
you can see they have a page already that talks about this. So I want, I'd love to know the uh, web analytics behind this particular page in the last month. Has it gone up? Have people searched for these two topics and this page come up at the top? I wonder. But uh, Tableau actually themes its AI and capabilities in three general areas, augmented analytics, business science, and data science. Probably worth mentioning a, a, a distinction between the term AI and machine learning. And at this point, it's probably worth sort of just highlighting why those two things are different. The key thing is machine learning is a discipline inside of AI. AI is the broad umbrella term for everything that happens inside a particular discipline. So in this case, it could be machine learning, it could be predictive modeling, all of those things sit under the AI banner. And so Tableau has three uh, broad areas. And if you scroll down, it actually spells out what those three broad areas mean. So the first one is augmented analytics, which means ask data and explain data. Two very cool tools. I always think actually our state is missing a trick. Our state should stop trying to teach you how to use Tableau by showing you the pills, the fields and everything and should just give you what you want, the chart itself. Let you ask questions, let you build charts, maybe even suggest charts it thinks you should see based on what you're asking. Explain data is far more useful. This basically looks into a data set and tries to spot any anomalies that are maybe either related to that specific data point or statistical variances in the whole spread of the data. It's actually a pretty good tool at doing that and helps people just discover those insights they maybe weren't aware of. If we go down to business science, this is where I think this, this, this sort of area starts to become more a little bit um, hard to understand because, you know, Tableau have all these marketing terms, simple, fast, trusted, integrated. But when you go down, it talks about forecasting, it talks about predictive modeling functions. But at the same time, business science has been used in a bunch of capabilities that relate to Einstein analytics. It used to be called Einstein analytics, it's now called Tableau Business Science. And it's gone on and changed names a few more times. But in essence, uh, it talks here about forecasting and predictive modeling, which are strictly disciplines in AI, but they're not typically what people think about when you're using AI. Uh, these, this, in this sort of use case, you have to know a lot about statistical modeling to really go and use these or trust these tools entirely. And the very last area is data science. This is, of course, giving people the ability to connect their own machine learning models or their own AI to Tableau. And so here you've got R, Python, MATLAB, and Analytics Extensions API. These are all ways of bringing that intelligence into the platform and then using it to work better. So it's actually really nice that Tableau have this page. I, I'm going to link it in the description so you can go check it out. But um, I hinted earlier that, in my opinion, this is just one way that Tableau could be using this um, information. They could be using this technology to help people. And I think it makes sense. From a product perspective, Tableau have this challenge where you know, the, the early adopters of Tableau were the people who built dashboards, so the people who go out and build um, tools and things that people use. For them to get over that hump, to get the mass adoption, to really go viral, something as viral as Excel, to where everyone knows what it is and knows how to use it, they really have to go to a much, much simpler user base. And in order to do that, you can't expect them to be opening up um, Tableau and doing data models. That's almost a step too far. And uh, businesses just haven't opened up their data stages and their data warehouses to people in that way. And so Tableau have to use AI and machine learning to surface insights on behalf of people to get them using the tool better. And that's sort of one approach they've taken. But I still fundamentally believe that actually you can use AI and machine learning capabilities to help people discover the tool better. And this is sort of a nuanced thing, so bear with me. You see, when we were sitting here asking it questions, this data was trained on a corpus that was just scanned from the internet a long time ago. And the way that ChatGPT, specifically the company behind ChatGPT, OpenAI, have done this is they took a technology that was actually released last year called GPT-3 and they combined it with human input. So essentially they had people who were editing the input and the style and the responses as they came across it. And they did this on mass scale. There's actually an academic paper, which I'll link to that you can go check out that talks about this. And that's what's made it a really, really good tool. Now, essentially they've trained it on what is a broad corpus of data about the world. And it's coming back with very good responses. The flip side is you could train this on a very specific set of data and you could end up getting really, really valuable outputs out of the system, even though um, it maybe doesn't necessarily know about things that might be new or might be coming up in the future. And so that's where I've got the Tableau help and the Tableau community, because if I just, you know, restrict the scope to just what Tableau has access to, they've got all the help documentation going back, I don't know how many versions. 
And the great thing about those is they're version specific. So you could actually very easily have um, Tableau explain something in different versions. If you go out and you train your own model on this specific corpus of information, essentially all the help documentation that you've put together to help people better use the tool. This is a highly underused resource. People never really find it. And what you tend to find is when you go to the Tableau knowledge base, they're linking back to the help documentation. When you look in the Tableau forums, they're also linking back to this. And that's sort of brings me to the second data set, which is this. The Tableau community pages also have tons of questions and tons of different things that people have asked alongside the answers and the things they're linking to. So you could also use that information as a way of building a model for the way people are finding problems and the answers that are solving those problems. And pairing those two things, you could maybe build something a little bit more intelligent than just ask data and explain data, which is instead of helping people see better insights, you instead help people use the tool better so they can get to those insights faster. It's a completely different paradigm, but it's more of an educative sort of approach. And it's something I think we've lost touch of uh, in more recent times. Back when I was young, Microsoft Word had a tool called Clippy, and Clippy would help you understand how to use Microsoft Word. You go to Clippy, you ask it how to do something, and it would tell you, here's how to do it, and it would point you to the right section of the software. We've lost that sort of finesse in more recent times with technology because I think smartphones and tablets have sort of forced people to make UI and technology much, much simpler. And that's good because it makes it more accessible, but then it also means the capabilities, the really powerful capabilities are pushed off to the fringes. And I think that happens with Tableau a lot. I can't tell you how many people just aren't aware of certain features that are deployed and live right now inside of Tableau. Uh, just the other week, I actually met someone who asked, why is it so hard to do year on year comparisons with Tableau? And in about three clicks, I went ahead and I showed them how to do it. Now, they didn't know that the approach I took was actually possible because they didn't know you could create an ad hoc calculation very easily to just change the number from being a minus one to being a minus 12 because we had months in the view and year, um, we had months in the view and then profit on the axis. And basically, we we're just looking at year on year sales uh, broken down by month. And I just changed the lookup to basically look back 12 months and create a duplicate of the view. And there we had it. We had a, a year on year comparison and you could then do difference and a bunch of other things from there on using percentages as well. And when I showed it to them, they found that approach easy, but what they were comparing it to is Power BI, which had something baked in already. And they were actually comfortable doing it the more complicated way if they knew it was as easy as I made it look. And so this is where I think Tableau really could use this tool. Use it to help surface better ways of using the product. Hey, you've just created a join, but we think the exact same thing as a data model would actually perform better. And here's why. Then an introduction to the model. And just have this AI paying attention to what's going on in the software, how you're using the software, how you're browsing the software. They already have this capability in Tableau Server, which looks at what other people are using that are similar to you, and then they're surfacing that to you as recommendations. It's exactly the same thing, but this time you're actually helping people better use the software. And so I think that's an area that could work really, really well. The copyright issues are endless. If you're not Tableau and you're thinking of doing this, I'd recommend you to just do this with your own data set, which in my case is going to be the uh, translations of the video into text, essentially. So going and getting the audio, uh, uh, transcribing the whole lot, but it's not going to be a very useful data set because it's all conversation. There's no sort of instructional element to it. Blogs, on the other hand, are a very good data set. If you've been writing blogs for the last decades, now is the time to see if you can train an artificial intelligence tool to go and maybe surface this in a way that works, that surfaces your blogs to people in a much better way. The other thing is if you've created a lot of blogs over the last few years, it's probably worth putting a copyright notice on the bottom of your blog, just so that when an AI or tool comes to take a corpus of your blog without your permission, at least you have some sort of protection for when these tools uh, then do fall under sort of a legal mandate of some sort. Because at the moment, it's just a free for all. And the tools just seem to be going out and scraping whatever they want because it's the internet, it's an open internet. So um, yeah, those are my thoughts on this issue. It's, it's a very nuanced issue. I'd be really intrigued to see where else it goes. But for me personally, I think the most useful area is just this stuff. Uh, there's so many simple things in Tableau that this tool could already do today. You could already ask it how to do them and it would already go off and explain them. I can't tell you how many, how many simple things. For example, um, how do I build a bar chart in Tableau? I've made a two minute video on this, so hopefully you'd find my video and go and watch it. But here, to build a bar chart in Tableau, follow these steps. Open Tableau and connect your data, great. 
Drag a measure field to column shelf and the dimension field to the row shelf. It's even specifically telling you which shelf that is. For example, if you want to create a bar chart showing the cells by region, you would drag the cells measure to the column shelf and the region dimension to the row shelf. In the marks card, select bar as the mark type, telling you to go to the marks card. If you want to customize the appearance of the bar chart, you can then use the options in the marks card to change the color, size, and other visual properties for the bars. If you want to add labels, go ahead. You can also use the options in the columns and row shelf to customize the axis for your bar chart. For example, you can change the number format, axis title, and other options. Once you've finished building your bar chart, you can then use the options in the worksheet tab to customize the appearance of the chart and titles and captions and save before you publish your work. If you knew nothing about Tableau, tell me that isn't a much better description than just going off to Google and trying to find the right help and then ending up stuck in a bunch of resources. If you don't understand any of the terms, you can always go ahead and follow that up. So you can say, hey, what is the marks shelf? And it understands you're talking about Tableau and it will just go ahead and tell you. In Tableau, the mark shelf is a visual element that you can use to customize the appearance of behavior. Uh, the mark shelf is located in the marks card, which is found in the lower right corner of the Tableau interface. The lower right corner of the Tableau interface. Oh, interesting. That's technically wrong, but I know what it's referring to. It, it, in the Tableau interface, there is nothing on the lower right corner. It all stops like on the left hand side, but it means the most lower right thing in the Tableau interface. So it, in that respect, maybe the language isn't great. It needs to be able to just show you images and you can go off to, to Google and, and set it up, but it gives you an explanation, okay? Um, you can also ask it where, let's see, let's ask where is the columns shelf, okay? And again, it understands it. It worked through my typo. In the in Tableau, the column shelf is a visual element that you can use to specify um, what to include in as columns in your visualization. The column shelf is located in the top left corner of the top tablet interface next to the row shelf. So that is actually correct. Um, and then again, it gives you a little bit more detail and you can go off and, and use it. So if you're new to Tableau and you're stuck, you don't understand how to do something, I think more often than not, this tool is going to give you the right answers. And if you combine that with your research skills and your ability to deduce information from the help documentation alongside the internet, just doing basic research Googling, I can't see how you would go wrong in understanding how to do something. Yes, you might get stuck. You might not know exactly what you're trying to do. You might not know exactly what data set you're working with. But at least when it comes to the realm of just understanding how to do something or knowing where there's knowledge gaps that you need to go off and investigate, I think this is a fantastic tool and I can't see why people won't be using this more to help them get their work done faster so they can achieve what they're trying to achieve and do less of messing around with tools and software that frankly don't matter because when the insight is what you're trying to get to, that's the only thing that matters and therefore that's pretty much the only thing you remember in the entire workflow. Three or four years down the line, when you've forgotten all this stuff, the insight is still what you'll have in your mind. So maybe Tableau should just spend more time making the tool easier to discover rather than trying to add more and more and more insights on top of it. It's just an opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'll catch you in the next one.